All right, guys, so uh, we need a game for the Switch, like a new one right now because the fans are really angry. Anyone got any ideas? Yeah, you first. Ah, uh, yes, uh, and doobly, sir. Uh, Chibi Robo Ziplash. Uh, you could you could put that on the Switch and title it Chibi Robo Ziplash U Deluxe if that works, uh, kind sir. That. That could work, but honestly, I don't think people really like Chibi Robo Zip Flash. Anyone else? You? We could release the Cease and Desist Classic Edition. You know, that, that would make the Nintendo fans happy. That could work, but you know, we need something stronger. Something that has more pizzazz. Something that everyone would want. Golf for the Game Boy? Yo! Nintendo has made a lot of games over the years. They have been around for nearly a hundred years, so of course they're gonna have a lot of titles under their belt. But sometimes a few don't get noticed as much as they should, which is what one may call obscure. The first game on our list is Donkey Kong for the Game Boy. Now, as you know, I'm not able to play this thing and capture it because, uh, reasons. So I'm gonna be emulating the game. Fine, 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 fine. I will. Just, just don't, don't kill me, Doug. Please. I just, I'll, I'll play, I'll play the game the way, the way uh, you intended it. Uh, uh. No. no! Oh my god, it's the Kool-Aid man! Alright, so the plot of this game is basically the same thing as Donkey Kong. Uh, Pauline gets kidnapped and you have to save her. Uh, I think every Mario game has someone getting kidnapped because, you know, that's a perfect lesson to teach kids. Alright, so this game is fairly simple. It's like the same thing as Donkey Kong as you would expect. What you got is your standard moves and all that, and you play as, uh, I think, uh, Mario. I think, I think that's Mario. And all you gotta do is just save Pauline like always because it's Donkey Kong. But there is a few differences ahead, like uh, extra levels and all that. And the level designs are fairly different. Donkey Kong stacked! Mario controls really good in this game. It feels a bit weighty compared to most Mario games, but it works really well. As you can see right here, I made the level really quickly. Are you freaking died? You know, there's not really much to say about this game other than it's a port of Donkey Kong for the Game Boy. With extra levels and challenges, of course. Hello everyone, welcome back to Mario's Mamma Mia cooking show. Today, we're gonna be making noodles on the DS. Let's hop right in. Well, it doesn't seem like that worked. During the DS and Wii era, Nintendo aimed to target a more casual audience, so of course someone at Nintendo was like... Now hear me out guys, hear me out. What if you could cook food on the DS? Whoa! Personal Trainer Cooking was a DS game made by Nintendo. You have all these meals from different countries and full-on tutorials on how to make this food. So if you need help making mac and cheese, just get out your DS and play Personal Trainer Cooking. If I'm being honest, I wouldn't really call this much of a video game, but it is an interesting part of history. You know, what's an even more interesting part of history though? The next game. Oh, uh, so sorry about all that. You just witnessed me playing Nestor's Funky Bowling for the Virtual Boy. Except I emulated it on a phone. I mean, I played it on the Virtual Boy, a console I totally own. Virtual Boy is a console that exists. It was made as a way of fans to not riot on Nintendo since the N64 was coming out a bit late, and guess what? It didn't do well. Nestor's Funky Bowling was one of the 22 games that came out on it, and the game was obviously forgotten. What you have here is an average run-of-the-mill bowling game, and Nestor also eats the camera. This game is really slow and not that fun. The only fun I had with the game was when Nestor gets abused when you miss. If you are looking for a bowling game, just play Wii Sports. This, this isn't worth your time, much like the Virtual Boy itself. And now, on to our next game. Oh, what do you want? You you got you got to see this man. Oh, open it. They put Tingle on the DS. 
Freshly picked Tingle's Rosy Rupee Land is a game that I wish didn't exist. What was Nintendo even thinking? Guys, 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 hear me out, hear me out. We gotta put Tingle on the DS. Uh, excuse me, sir, are you mental? Oh uh, yeah! This game is about everyone's favorite Zelda character, Tingle. When waking up, he hears a weird voice that tells him to go to the lake. After he goes to the lake, some guy named Father Rupee tells him that if he gets enough rupees, he'll be able to go to Rupee Land. In this place, he'll be able to get whatever he wants, so of course Tingle is all for it. This game is your standard adventure game, and all you really do is explore the overworld and search for as many rupees as possible. Tingle controls fine and exploring the world is decently fun. Surprisingly, this is a solid game. You get funny characters and dialogue, and the game even has a good soundtrack. This really blew my expectations out of the water because I was expecting a game I wouldn't like, but here I am enjoying it! Yeah, that game was a really pleasant surprise. Maybe there's a sequel or something. I'm getting too ahead of myself. There can't be a sequel, and if there was a sequel, it would be awful. Uh, so funny story. Are you- Tingle's Balloon Fight is a game that came out exclusively in Japan for my Nintendo. G what you have here is basically just Balloon Fight on the DS, but might I bring up that this is actually the best version of Balloon Fight I've played? They fixed all the issues I had with the original, and it utilizes the two screens of the DS pretty well. The only problem I have with the game is that it's pretty hard to come by these days, so if you want to play it yourself, you're gonna have to keep a lookout. Alrighty, so after all of that, we got one more game left, and what could that game be? Yeah, uh, over here we got, uh, uh, yeah, not that, uh, we got, uh, Uniracers for the SNES, is this what you were looking for? <gasps> Sonic? Sonic! What?! Uniracers was a 2D racing game released for the SNES in 1994. It was made as a way to know that the SNES could handle fast-paced games. Nintendo sucks, okay? Uh, Sega? Sega is the best company ever! Yeah, well, can you be a unicycle on the Sega Genesis? Nintendo is the best company ever! And for what they tried, it really works. Now, is this the best racing game I've ever played? No. But is it a fun and creative game to kill time with? Uh, yeah. What you have here is a standard 2D racer. Make it to the end and first place to win. But there is one other mode to add variety to the game, and that is stunt mode. What you have here is a small obstacle course for you to do a bunch of flips on, and that's it. Most of the game is just good old fast-paced racing with unicycles. That shouldn't be as fast as they are. <laughs> the design of the tracks is basically the same thing, but with a different layout in all of them. These layouts consist of straight lines, loops to do flips on, ramps to jump off of, and parts of the track to make you twist. This game is probably one of my favorite SNES games of all time, which makes me sound like a complete lunatic. If you see this game at your local Goodwill or wherever you buy games at, I cannot recommend it enough. It really is a hidden gem on the SNES and should be talked about way more than it is. And that's all the games we have to talk about today, because, you know, there possibly couldn't be any more Nintendo games as obscure as those. Oh, but there is. No!